Hi, Ben from Murrow. Today we're diving into the world of Teltonica. I will show you how to create a Teltonica RMS account. Then we'll take our RUC956 router and link it to that account. We will have a look at how to activate Teltonica RMS licenses. And finally, we will manage this device remotely. Let's get started. Okay, the RUC956 router is powered up. I have my internet cable plugged into the WAN port and my laptop connected to LAN 1. Now we have to access this router by going to the IP address 192.168.1.1. Let's do that. Let's type in our IP address 192.168.1.1 and press enter. Our default username is admin and our password can also be found on the label at the bottom of the router. We have our password entered and let's click on login. Once we've logged into this device, we will be asked to create a new password. So let's go ahead and do that. As always, we have Miro exclamation 234. Let's save new password. So let's head over to network and WAN settings. And over here, we will find a few options. Number one, we have WAN and we can see that my internet is connected via DHCP, which means that I'm receiving a DHCP IP from the current network. Our second option is called WAN 6, and this means that it's using IPv6 to receive an IP address through DHCP. Number three and four is used for LTE connection, but we will only be using a WAN connection today. We'll leave it as basic as possible. So let's have a look at our wireless and our SSID. And here we can see we have a default RUC956 SSID. Now that we have the basics of the router set up, let's head over to the RMS platform and create an account. And click on register. Here, let's enter our email, mirrorrnd01 at gmail.com and let's give it a password. Okay, I accept the Teltonica terms of service, accept Teltonica data, and I would not like to subscribe to the newsletter at the moment. Let's click on register, and now you will see registered successfully, please check your email. Let's head over to our Gmail account, and here you will see that we received an email from RMS. Let's quickly click on confirm email, and the user activated successfully. Great, let's close this tab, and let's head back to RMS. Let's click on login. So, mirrorrnd01 at gmail.com and our password. So once we've logged into the new RMS account, the first thing that RMS will ask us to do is to choose a two-factor authentication method. Let's click on continue and there will be three options. Number one is email. Once you've signed into your RMS account, just like we've done now, we will receive a one-time pin via email. That's the first option. The second option would be a time-based one-time password. This means that it will use an authenticator app like Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator, and then you use that temporary pin to log in. Lastly, we have Teltonica ID. Teltonica ID is specific to Teltonica. You can download the application from the Play Store and it would use the same authentication method as a one-time password, only it will be from Teltonica. For today, we will use our email. So let's click on save and let's confirm that. So let's confirm that we've received a one-time pin from Teltonica. There we go. We see there is a new mail. There's our one-time pin and let's paste it there. Let's submit. And now we are logged in to our new RMS platform. Now that we're logged into our RMS platform, we will need to add the device to the platform. First, we will use the serial number and the LAN MAC, including a password. These details can be found inside of the router. 
Remember, we're still logged into the router, so let's go back. Let's go to Services, Cloud Solutions, and RMS. Here you will see the device must be registered on the RMS platform before connecting. So let's scroll down. We have our serial number and our LAN map. So let's copy that and let's click on add new device. We will be adding a RUT 956 and we can automatically enable the device service. What this means is once the device has been added, it will automatically start to monitor and manage this device. If we deselect the device service, that would also disable monitoring, which means that the device will appear offline. Let's leave it enabled for now. Let's give it a name, we'll call it Miro R&D, our serial number we've copied, and we need our MAC address, our LAN MAC address. And finally, we need the password. This password is not the same as the password underneath the router because we changed it when we logged in. So enter your newly created password here. And remember our password was Miro exclamation 234, and let's click on submit. Now we will get validating list. We'll see a few steps. It's adding the device and we can see one device was successfully added. Let's click on next. And now we'll be waiting for a connection. We can close this page and the RMS will still try to connect to the device. So let's close it. And here is our list of devices. At the moment, it says it's not activated. Let's go back to the router. I prefer to use system, setup wizard and RMS. And here we will see the device is trying to connect and now it's connected. Let's go back to the RMS and refresh our page and we'll wait for the unit to come online. There we go. Our device is online and it's successfully been added to the RMS. If you've powered up the router and you've taken a while to create the RMS account and link the device to RMS, you can experience some connectivity issues. First, the device will try to connect to RMS every two minutes for the first hour. If within that hour the device was not connected, it will try every five minutes for 14 days. If within 14 days the device was not added to RMS, it will go into standby mode. And then you have to manually connect it to the RMS. To do that, simply go back to your router and then over here, you will see a connect button. In our case, it is connected, so we have reconnect and reset, but you will have a connect button. Since our router is connected, let's go back to RMS and we can start. Once you've added your new device to the RMS platform, that device will receive a 30-day free trial, which means you can monitor it, manage it, and access it remotely. After 30 days, you will need a Teltonica RMS credit or a license. Teltonica RMS licenses can be purchased at swiftrms.com powered by Miro. Let's head over to swiftrms.com and click on products. Over here, you will find a few options. At the bottom, you will find one device for one month. This means that you can manage this device for a full month. Then we have three year, five year and 10 year credits. Teltonica RMS have two options, credits and packs. So let's imagine you have a Windows server connected to this RAT 956. You would like to use remote desktop connection. With RMS Connect, you can remote desktop remotely to that device through RMS. And for that, you would need a remote connect or VPN pack. Once you've purchased your Teltonica RMS license, you will receive a token. To activate that token or code, simply go back to RMS, head over to your account settings at the top and click on activate code. It will look something like this and paste your token. Click on activate and your code is successfully activated. So if we go to management and devices and then select the device actions, device and manage services. You will see that our service is activated, monitoring is activated and auto extend. Monitoring simply means that the device is being monitored and if we disabled monitoring, the device will appear offline. Then auto extend means that 
when the credit expires, it will automatically extend and grab a new credit. So as you can see, 250627, that's when this device started using the credit. And when the credit expires, it would use the next one automatically. You can disable this, but I would keep it enabled just to make sure that the device is being monitored and managed. And now let's click on device web UI. This means that we would like to access the web interface of our RUT 956. The first thing that we can do is we can click on connect. And this means that the web UI will be opened within the RMS platform. So over here, we can see that we can access this device, but it's within the RMS platform. If we close this, you will also notice that a link was created and it will expire in about 45 minutes. Simply click on it, it would now open a new tab and we can access this device. So let's access it. And there we go. We are logged into this device remotely. And that's it. We've set up our RUT 956 router with basic default configuration. We've created an RMS account and we've linked this device to that account. We've pasted our token and we've activated the RMS license and we can now manage this device through RMS. If you require any additional assistance, please send us an email to support at mirror.co.za or give us a call on 012-657-0960 and we'll see you in the next one.